Okay, let's start with synchronous learning. Teaching in person with students either on campus or via a video conferencing tool is teaching for synchronous learning. So in other words, it's happening live in real time. Advantages to this approach are that you can deliver the same experience to all of your students at the same time. And generally, it's a group experience and learners can ask questions and get instant answers. You can ask your students to collaborate and you can observe their interactions, engage their understanding of the teaching session, making adjustments if needed. However, the downside to this approach is that you and your students are locked into a schedule or timetable. There's no flexibility for the students in when and where they receive content. So it's generally a one size to fit all approach that doesn't offer any consideration for individual approaches to learning. And the quality of the teaching is very much dependent on the individual educator. Some examples of synchronous learning include on-campus lectures, tutorials and labs and online lectures and tutorials via video conferencing tools. So if synchronous learning is real-time delivery, then asynchronous learning, as you would imagine, provides learning opportunities that are not restricted to a scheduled session or timetable. This means there's flexibility around when, where, and importantly, at what pace the learner engages with the content. Maybe they need a little bit more time to process information and to connect the dots that they don't get in a live synchronous session. Generally, asynchronous learning is a more individual and learner-centered approach. Students may even have a choice around the type of content they want to engage with. Maybe there is an online reading, a video or a podcast that all cover the same information. In asynchronous learning, learners are free to share thoughts and questions with their peers and with the educator that they may not have the confidence to do in the real-time synchronous session. However, they may not receive an immediate response because it's not live. From a teaching perspective, asynchronous learning allows you to reach a much wider audience as you're not restricted by time or location. We should also consider some of the downsides to asynchronous learning. Research has found students can feel isolated if social elements are not designed into the experience. And it requires more self-discipline and motivation to complete the content. Some examples of asynchronous learning include online courses, pre-recorded video lessons, online forums and discussion boards. So there's advantages and considerations to both synchronous and asynchronous learning. So when should you use each modality? Well, ultimately it's your call. But as a general rule, I tend to look at the session level learning outcomes. And if there are lower order outcomes, or I'm introducing a concept or piece of information, then I would tend to think that component could be delivered as asynchronous content to give learners the opportunity to engage with the content, to consider and digest it. Then I would tend to look at the higher order outcomes to be achieved in the synchronous space, creating an environment for learners to do, apply and show understanding and to be guided by the educator and peer interaction in the live, in-person, synchronous space. So I hope this video has helped you define synchronous and asynchronous learning and has prompted you to consider how you view and approach the design of your learning experiences. If you got value from the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content.